Okay, great. Hi, Danny. Uh, Hello. So, um, Robin here from KGK on Facebook. Um, so, we've just been playing your game, uh, Change the Homeless Survival uh, Experience. And I wonder if you could tell us a bit about the inspiration behind it and sort of the way that you've gone from that inspiration through to what looks to be like to be pretty much a finished game, a finished product. Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just like, uh, yeah, we, we've kind of made it as uh, sort of a counterpoint to other games that are out there about homelessness. They don't really portray homelessness in the right way, I'll say, uh -huh. kind of in a more jokey way. And also the way like tabloids and other media portrays homelessness has created this whole stigma where people assume all homeless are addicted to something and they don't cover things like mental, uh, mental illnesses and relationship breakdown and uh, abuse and things like that. Uh -huh. They all play a big part of it. And we wanted to build something that would uh, reach a different audience as opposed to other kinds of media and uh, just build some empathy really and some humanity in people. <laughs> um, but yeah, it started out as like a few month experimental project and then we ended up spending about four years trying to make it as right as possible. Wow, uh, awesome, <laughs> awesome. And it, it, I mean, I, one uh, couple, uh, what it reminded me of slightly, I haven't played the game, but um, in terms of the social responsibility and the, um, the way that it seems to be making the player aware of the real struggles that these the people in the situation will face. It reminded me a bit of Papers, Please. Yeah. And, and it seems to me like, it's almost uh, sort of inspired by that genre that, that has been you yeah. know, created by Papers, Please, but obviously with a different subject matter. Would you say that's true? And, and yeah, I think, I think Papers, Please definitely was somewhere in the back of my head when I was thinking of doing this. I mean, it's probably the most famous political satire game there is. Uh -huh. um, so you can't help but not think of it, especially with like that same kind of somber tone in the art and that it's, you know, it's pixel art as kind of well. So it's that it's very accessible from a game point of view, like, sure. um, but it has very deep issues that it tackles. So. Uh -huh. Awesome. And uh, I was impressed, impressed as well. You sort of touched on it in your introduction, but I was impressed at the starting screen about the different classes with, mm. you know, someone who's just in poverty and addict and, yeah. and a, um, a veteran and, and all of the different mm. uh, sort of classes you've got at the beginning. Was that something which was sort of an immediate, uh, an immediate idea that you had when you had this yeah. idea or did it suddenly come to an inspiration one day we've got these different starting points yeah I, de I definitely wanted to show different starting points from the beginning because um, I think it's important for people to realize the different paths that can take homelessness and that it can happen to anyone so each class sort of has uh, so there's five different classes addict abandoned uh, mental illness veteran and poverty mm -hmm. and each one sort of represents a multiple thing so abandoned represents like abuse relationship breakdown foster care like 40% of kids who are in foster care will go through homelessness at some point. That's a weird and horrible statistic, but yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Wow. And uh, out of interest, is there, do you have any, any links maybe to um, charities or anything like that? Or yeah, is that something you're exploring? Yeah, we're giving 20% of the profits wow. to charity. Wow, that's, that's, that's awesome. And is this uh, it's mainly a PC game? Are you also coming to console? And yeah, it's, it's currently available in Steam Early Access uh -huh. um, for PC, desk, uh, Linux and Mac. Uh -huh. And uh, we're going to be bringing it to mobile and tablets later on and then Fantastic. maybe console. Fantastic. If they awesome. say yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. And how is it getting onto Steam? I know that they've changed the way that Steam works for new developers in the last well, year Well, it's, or it's two. really easy to get on Steam and okay. really hard to get discovered now. Uh -huh. we're, talk, we're talking like a hundred games a day at least being uploaded so 90% sure. of those games aren't even going to be anywhere near the front page because no one sees them they get buried so it's very I think we were, we were very lucky getting the discoverability we did when we launched um, and yeah the responses have been really positive we've got like over a 90% rating on Steam now wow that's fantastic um, yeah so Hopefully things keep going. <laughs> and can I ask uh, the the price on Steam uh, when it's not on sale? Uh, it's nine ninety nine in dollars. Nine ninety nine dollars. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So about what eight fifty or something. Yeah, about like, like that. seven eight quid. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Awesome, awesome. And uh, the art style itself, it's it's very as you, you touched on, very pixel art, mm -hmm. uh, sort of inspired, and then the animation as well seems to be I don't know maybe about twenty fps or something like that. Yeah. Is that I mean, it's a great art style? Is that mm -hmm. something which? you found that the artists that you, you've sort of brought on of embrace is that something which artists really enjoy working with this style or yeah i think i mean the artist we've got is a pixel specialist uh, we actually have multiple artists handling different parts um, but uh, our previous game poncho was a pixel art game as a platformer and that had quite beautiful pixel art so we brought him onto the next project awesome i mean we were, we were thinking of doing 3d or more 2d animated artsy style but uh -huh. we wanted it to be really accessible because uh -huh. it's 
got some pretty hard issues. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, it reminded me of the old classic. Just visually, it reminded me initially of like a Golden Axe, that kind of thing. You know, the oh, old yeah, 2D yeah. scroller. I think there's, <laughs> there's definitely he he lo he's very inspired by Sega, the artist. Uh -huh, so, awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah I, I, I mean, it's, I think it's interesting. You've got inspiration, uh, roguelikes, mm. sort of Golden Axe 2D scroller sort of thing, or double yeah. double dragon or whatever it was yeah, called. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and then you've also um, you know got this social responsibility angle mm. as well. <laughs> It's all sort of meshed in very, very well. And I suppose that's thanks to you as a designer just oh, to thanks. come up with all these ideas and, and put them into place. Yeah, it's been, it took a long time to get the balance right. Like we were trying to find a balance between abstracting it for gameplay at the same time uh -huh. as uh, making it sort of work as an emotional experience. Right, yeah, and, and the, bond, the way it's, it's almost text-based, or, or at least the narrative is almost text-based as well. Very impressive. Oh, thank you. Well, that's fantastic. So um, change your homeless survival experience on Steam at about £8.50. Um, thanks very much for the interview, and uh, oh, yeah, we'll, we'll be looking at this later. Great, yeah. I just have fun playing it. Cheers, oh, mate. Have fun at the you. show. <laughs> right, cheers. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's going to be great for the stream. <laughs>